I'm in Spain to drive the new Cayenne, Porsche's bread and butter car. Now, Porsche may be a sports car manufacturer, famous for making rear engine flat six powered cars, but this car makes it its most money. This is the reason why Porsche is today stable and can make all those great sports cars. So let's see what's new on the new Cayenne. The real reason for the Cayenne's blockbuster success, however, is that it walks the talk. It looks and drives like a pakka Porsche. This was true of the first generation car in 2002, the E1. It's true of this new generation car, the E2. And if anything, this facelifted E22, a bit of a tongue twister, is better still. Of course, the way to identify this new Cayenne is these LED lights. Now, the four-point LED lights are going to be carried out on many new Porsches, and this car is one of the first production cars after the 918 to get it. The other bit is these two folds on the nose. And traditionally, there was a very strong V on the bonnet, but it's been replaced by this thing. The other bit that is new are these new air blades. This inlet has been shaped to turn the air into the bonnet, and that is really distinctive. There are changes on the inside as well. The 918 type steering wheel is the most obvious addition. And look down and you can see Sport Plus, not present on earlier versions of this SUV. Porsche has improved comfort levels on the back seat too. There's a bit more space eked out by the newly positioned rear seat. You get a really large bench, there's plenty of legroom, and thigh support is very good. Visibility isn't great, you get the big front seats blocking your view out. But what really lifts the experience is the fact that this remains one of the nicest SUV cabins there is. Yes, the insides of the Range Rover are more plush and better trimmed, but the Cayenne isn't too far behind. With the updated car also comes an updated engine range. There's a more powerful V6 turbo diesel, a V8 turbo diesel and a new V6 turbo petrol. Of course, the V8 twin turbo petrol or the Porsche Cayenne turbo remains in the range. The S diesel, for example, has a stonky 4.2 litre, 380 horsepower V8. Of course, it's insanely quick, but just look at the numbers. 0 to 100 comes up in 5.3 seconds. And it even reaches 160 in just 12.9 seconds. That's incredibly fast for a diesel car. In fact, this diesel V8 is now faster than the original petrol Cayenne Turbo. Diesel engine technology has come incredibly far. Also pretty impressive is this new twin turbo V6. It doesn't have the best exhaust note around and it doesn't sound as crisp as a flat six. But what it does have is bags and bags of power. It's properly sporty. Really nice mid-range, strong mid-range. Goes all the way past six and a half thousand RPM. And though it does sound a bit strained, there is really a lot of power being pushed through here. The Porsche always said they didn't want their Cayenne to ride like a sports car. They didn't want it to feel hard and uncomfortable. And with this car, they've improved the ride even further. What they've done is increase the variation you get between comfort and sport. So comfort is a bit more comfortable and you don't really feel too many of the bumps. And it's also nicer to drive in sport because they've allowed the car to harden itself even more. It really has worked impressively for Porsche. Now if you put it in sport, the suspension does firm up a bit, especially on these slightly low pro tires and you do feel the ridges in the road, but what it does is allow the car to corner incredibly flat. It just, just defies belief the way this car can just sit on the road, even when you're taking a tight corner. What the Cayenne is famous for, of course, is its sports car-like handling. It doesn't matter that its near two-ton weight is held high above the ground, Porsche has made their off-roader one of the best driving SUVs there is. What this new Cayenne also gets is something called Sport Plus, an even sportier mode. And 
Once I select it, this just takes things up to another level. Of course, it is pretty stiff and you can feel every cat eye on the road as the wheel thumps over it. But you do get a level of steering precision you just can't imagine you'd get in an SUV. Throttle responses are better, gear shifts are quicker. And get to your favorite set of corners and it just holds on like glue. Even long corners like this where the weight of the SUV should normally play havoc with the handling are just taken brilliantly. Wow, that's good. is just amazing. What's also nice is the sharper steering. Along with the tighter body control and pointier front end comes this nicer, sharper steering. Porsche is a company that believe in continuous improvement. They've done it for years with the 911, which is today one of the best handling cars in the world, despite having its engine in the back. And they've done it with this car, an SUV, which drives like a sports car. It still is not the best off-roader in the world, and it can't hold a candle to something like a Range Rover. But for the real world, this car remains one of the best SUVs around. The list of improvements is quite long. It's got a nice new nose with those four-point LED lights, really attractive. It now drives better. It's nicer to drive, even nicer to drive, unbelievably and it has a lovely new v6 twin turbo petrol engine that gives you both power and economy so overall this remains probably the best suv in the real world